Hey everybody, my name is Lude Lloyd, but you can all just call me Lloyd. And on behalf of Vertic and Chibi, I just wanted to say thank you for coming, fellow travelers, to the Golden Feather Tavern. Let's sit back, grab a drink, and have a chat. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to the Golden Feather Tavern, where your hosts, Chibi and Vertec, discuss ashes of creation and important topics spoken about within the ashes community. Every week, we invite you, the viewer, and a special guest to pull up a chair, grab a pint, and join the conversation with us. Today is the 17th of May, 2024. Uh, note to everybody out there, this is not Groundhog's Day, no matter what it may feel like. <laughs> uh, we are on episode uh, 207, and this is going to be a ludicrous live stream with our uh, traveling bar bard, 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 well, d don't this. be bored. That's, that's totally Better than a bird. not what we're supposed to be today, right? Not supposed <laughs> to be bored. The <laughs> traveling bard joining us today is Lou Lloyd. I did this so much better the first time through. The first take. You know, first take. We can edit that. We can edit that. It's fine. We'll Edit it in post, it'll, it'll be, be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so how are you doing today there, friend Lloyd? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Pretty oh, fantabulous. It's a Friday. Nice, nice. And um, Chibi, could you tell yeah. us um, what we have on tap today? Absolutely. So uh, we are intending to talk about the uh, live stream feedback from the community. Um, not the AMA, by the way. It's been a couple of weeks. Talking about the Dev live stream from April. Um, been a week. Game systems, huh? It's been a week. It's been a week. So long. Yeah. <laughs> That's so I long mean, in the content it, creator it happened, uh, time honestly. span. We had the it really yeah, we had the April Dev stream, and then like literally the next week we had the AMA. It was like crazy. Um, then we're gonna talk about some game systems, such as like uh, server merge solution ideas, time spent traveling, what sieges might look like at level fifty, etc., and uh, some other random topics. So, mm. lot. But the most important topic today is our guest Lloyd. Hi. So, hi. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know you, because um, we recently just met, who are you? What do you do? And why Ashes of Creation? Sure. Um, first of all, I'm Lloyd. Uh, you can call me Lude Lloyd. You can call me Lloyd, whatever. Uh, I initially picked the name just because I'm pretty explicitive when it comes to how I talk. And I just want to make sure that there's no like little kitties that are just like, oh, you know, I'm just going to join this guy's scream. And he says the F word 50 times, but I'll keep it yeah. clean for this stream for sure. Uh, <laughs> you know so, what, um, you know what's really funny though is when you when you when you do stuff like that to put it in your name it might be that the whole stress and effect of ooh, oh ooh, yeah ooh, this stream's gonna be fun yeah <laughs> yeah you know it might that. um but yeah uh i originally got into ashes of creation i think around 20 like august 2020 somewhere around there um hmm. And so I, I basically was just playing WoW Classic at the time, and I had one of my guild members just kind of say, like, hey, this seems pretty cool. So I looked into it, and I was like, well, maybe I'll go into it. And then, like, shortly after, like, the Lazy Peon video came out, and I was like, well, yeah. I will... And I had some COVID money laying around, and I was like, I'll just buy the... I'll buy the package, because, you know, I, government gave me money to buy games. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah, it was great. Uh, I wasn't working because I was a bartender there so uh around that time now I've moved on to IT I am an IT lead at my company and um I just like to play games watch anime play some D&D &D, and uh just waiting for a game that hasn't come out yet fair right. as as we all are at this yep. point yeah. you're in <laughs> the right club at least you're here yeah No, I definitely joined the the roleplay community as you guys seem to be into the roleplay community as well. Mm -hmm. Uh mostly because of like the theater in high school. So okay. I did I did that my senior year of high school, became a thespian. That was a lot of a lot of time that was devoted in that single year because uh the requirements are pretty high to do that. So yeah. it was fun. Yeah. Um yeah. I 
am more into RP than Vertech is, but Vertech wel welcomes it for sure. Yeah, for the most part with me, it's a, it's a staying in character issue. I tend to just mm. become me again after like a couple minutes of really focusing on staying in character. That's the best so, part. Make your character you. I was going to say, that's, yeah, that's I base my character being. pretty yeah. close to myself. Honestly, I'm like, I can't break character if it's just me. Haha. <laughs> Every character is like just me with like a little bit of a difference and that's it. Like just the littlest bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I hey. just I, I always do better if I have a lot of other people that are that are full tilt roleplay, then I can stay in a little bit longer. But oh, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Nothing wrong with that, though. We got to start somewhere. And I mean, one of the things that I, I like, I think you said, Lloyd, that you play D&D. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I like is D&D &D and role playing in video games are kind of similar, except for people just are less used to role playing in a video game, whereas D&D &D kind of comes with the territory because it's all tabletop. But yeah. um, I mean, I feel like the role play is kind of similar. What are your thoughts on that? Honestly, I'm actually not very experienced when it comes to like video game role play. Uh, okay, yeah, same. I've, I've entered Moonguard uh, in the Goldshire Tavern or whatever, but uh, <laughs> that wasn't really for me. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's also pretty hard for me to get into video game roleplay simply because I am a very competitive gamer. I like to yeah. PvP and, and do things at like a min max level. And sometimes that's hard to roleplay when you're min maxing. So, um, fair. I just see a lot of opportunity within Ashes of Creation to role play and to have that open world experience where it's more immersive, where you actually care about your node as a player and as a role player. Like you do like all these types of things like like it, the, the system makes it so easy to RP. Yeah. OK, so if you've never RP'd in game, what makes you excited to RP in Ashes? Uh, particular Particularly, I, I like to do the PvP aspect, so um, just being in character in a node siege or a castle war, uh, I mean, this dev update, we're going to get node wars, so I'm pretty excited for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so I get to figure out all this stuff, and then like you get to work with your uh, your team, your 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 guild, your the citizens of your node that may not be part of your guild, all that stuff, so... You get, yeah. There's a lot of ways that you can interact with role playing that doesn't exactly. How do, how do I say this? It's like you can interact with role playing without actually having to feel like you're role playing. Yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to Cash, Jibs, and Sunny talk about um, like they just had their role play uh, episode. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the things. Um, from Gilded House, Cersei had said that she had just kind of followed some people in Guild Wars 2 role playing and what it was enjoying just being immersed in them role playing alone. Um, and it was really fun to experience that. And I look forward, um, as some of you have said in the chat, I look forward to seeing what Ash's RP is going to be like because I think it'd be really fun. I think there's going to um, be some good uh, RP fuel. I, of course, we do need more lore. <laughs> uh, don't EP. EP Key said Goldshire is about as accurate to real RP as Vegas is to accurate to all of America. And yeah. funny enough, guess where I live? Vegas. <laughs> so what's up? Nice. <laughs> nice. That's fair. Um, Vertek, do you have any questions for him? Oh, well, we can come up with plenty. Come up with plenty. Plenty. So, plenty. Uh, tons of them in the, in the canon. <laughs> <laughs> so... When um, Ashes goes live and you go to make your very first video that's uh, live gameplay, everything's been adjusted. All the all the tweaks and all the for what we know of right now turns into factual stuff. What's going to be your first goal content bit to do? Content bit. Um, I don't Either know if it's going to be stream my... Or a YouTube upload or something like that. Yeah, I think a lot of my content is going to be centered around like educational like here's these mechanics these are the class previews this type of thing but my ultimate goal of like content is getting a competitive pvp scene and trying to shout cast and then start like a grassroots like tournament style gameplay um that would be my ultimate goal 
but okay. I don't think that's going to be, you know, right at the start. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are just grinding, a lot of people that are just playing the game for fun, mm -hmm. etc. But yeah, ultimate goal is the very far, far off future, which is uh, the topic that has entered the realm before, which is the MMO and esports. And um, I want to see if Ash Ashes can revolutionize that. Hmm. Hmm. Very yeah, fair. Could end up being a gold mine for uh, player run esports, or it could end up really not working very well at all. It's going to be, I think it's going to be one or the other. It's going to be really hard to, for this particular systems that they're designing to, to land in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you for, or to that point, um, how do you think Ashes is going to do with esports? Because uh, we had a chat about that in one of our previous streams, and that was the dev discussion. Um, and yeah, I'm just curious to see what you think. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, how do you think Ashes is going to fit in esports? Uh, I don't know if it'll fit the generic model. It, it might, but I think the 64 class system has a lot of potential. And I also think that, like, uh, there's a lot of potential for open world PvP and a, a whole new system for, like, how we approach uh, arenas and types of game modes, like King of the Hill, like, Protect the King, uh, like, Strongholds, Sieges and stuff like that, like, so small-scale Sieges or something mm -hmm. of that similar. I think there's a lot of potential. And there's a lot of options to go for that um, things like WoW Arena hasn't done. Uh, and I don't think there's been another real MMO that's really attempted to do esports. I've seen a little bit of Black Deserts, like 1v1 tournaments, but they didn't really feel like that to me. Also, I was looking okay. at some Lineage 2 tournaments, and it looked like the tournament setup was like really, really cool. But the gameplay was just not very fun to watch. So mm. I feel like Ashes definitely has a way to, with the mechanics that they're implementing with like the fighter uh, mechanics so far, I think there could be a lot of skill-based gameplay in Ashes that doesn't really exist in other MMOs. Yeah, fair. Um, hmm. hmm. What else to ask? What else to ask? <laughs> well we could we could go on for a little while but uh we do have a whole lot of other topics to cover today though true we do and i'm just gonna do this here in chat just to say hey everybody definitely check out lloyd here on all the different areas listed and yes. many more i'm sure but also, uh these are a start his Sorry, youtube is uh beyond 500 finally Woo! it's over <laughs> 500 <laughs> But yeah, so that's huge. So all we have to do is watch time. I believe you guys are close to that too, right? Just the the watch time. Uh, we're almost to five hundred. Yeah, uh, I think we're like a good fifty off, but really close. Yeah. Um, we'll get there. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Um, but for those <laughs> of you that are watching this on YouTube later, please uh, catch us live. Um, you can watch us interview our guests live on Fridays at uh. 7 p.m. Eastern time usually. This week is 8 p.m. Next week is actually going to be on Saturday. But with that being said, um, Lloyd, is there any of the uh, overall topics that you would like to cover first, like the live stream or the game systems or any of the random topics? I'll let you pick. Um, you mean like outside of what we planned tonight? Just No, just uh, could you choose one of the topics to start with? Please. Uh yeah, sure. Uh I think we can just start with like the the nighttime lighting and visual effects. Okay. So, um one of the live stream feedback discussions that we picked up for that um is why is there so much bot spam happening right now? The timing <laughs> of it was Jeez. absolutely perfect or terrible, one or the other. Yep. Um but yeah, so the first topic within the uh, live stream feedback discussion is on nighttime lighting and VFX. And here is that link ahead of time. Drop all of the streamers into one stream and watch the chaos ensue. Oh, that would be so much fun, Cinderix. <laughs> That'd be um, great. 
So this comes from uh, the Reddit. And um, there's a little bit here, but they generally were talking about how overall they thought the most recent update um, for Midnight Magic was amazing. They've been following Ashes of Creation for a few years now and have uh, been getting more and more involved ever since Alpha 2 was announced, which is great. Um, they just wanted to post like their their thoughts on it, like the good and the bad um, with it. And in general, they thought that the lighting looked good, um, but um, the lighting coming off of like the torches and campfires felt more like a spotlight. And I kind of agree with that. Um, but in general, what are your thoughts on the lighting and VFX in, in the Midnight Magic update? Um, I definitely like the direction they're going. Um, uh, obviously there were some touch-ups. I believe somebody was, when I was, uh, watching the development update as like a reaction to it, they were, they were telling me that it wasn't the full visual effects change. They hadn't like done the full revamp yet. So that I, I guess they're still working on it and it's still in progress. So, uh, it should be looking a lot better. Uh, yeah. but I do agree that the, the lighting was definitely just like a fixed asset and it didn't have like really any like it, uh, it didn't really blend into the environment at all uh like it didn't like fade out off on it, there was like definitely a very hard light that like stopped at, at the end of the radius so like you could see like things that they they're probably going to fix um i did like the overall darkness uh around the character i definitely thought that further out could probably have darker tones so like the the further away things are the darker they become i don't know if that's a thing that you can do in unreal or anything like that but um just from a general feel perspective that's how i felt yeah fair sorry i muted myself because uh my dog was barking. <laughs> <laughs> being a crazy doggo he was um, so yeah we uh I remember we we've had some conversations on this uh, about the lighting as well both during some live reactions and whatnot my my view is still kind of the same like they've made some changes to it and it's it's gotten better i think but mm -hmm. yeah i pretty much agree with the sentiments that uh, the real party pooper on uh <laughs> on on reddit posted there is it's the um positional like the stationary lighting like the man-made lighting, so to say, like the the campfires, the torches, and and things like that, they yeah. they are very they're they're too focused and too bright. Need to be dulled down and expanded out, diffused. I guess is the proper term there. Yeah. And I mean the the nighttime lighting though looks great. Yeah, I kind of want to do like the insert Stephen. This is a work in progress. Things are subject to change. Yeah, 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 moment yeah, yeah, here. Um, cause like we are aware of that, by the way, like for, for mm -hmm. those of you thinking like, oh, you know, but this is Alpha 2, like not everything's like there yet. Yeah, we are aware. We're aware. <laughs> this is just our constructive criticism towards it, I guess. Just like, yeah, everything's looking great. These are, st you still need work. We know that you're still working on it. It's not that big of a deal. But that being said, how about that change to the ball of lightning? Um, Lloyd, did you see the original lightning ball? Oh yeah, I've I've been pulling the the lightning ball for a while. There's been plenty of community uh, content creators that like bring that up and talk about oh, yeah. it. Um, originally when I first saw it, I thought it looked cool. I thought it looked great. There was a lot of criti criticism around it, um, and they're like people are saying that they're it's too busy looking. Like there's going to be too much going on the screen if you have like 50 mages all shooting it off. But during yeah. the PvP caravan live stream. When I was watching them all fight, and there's like about 40 people, I want to say, pretty close. Yeah. Uh, the screen didn't look busy. Uh, there was like a lot of spells and stuff going off. There was a lot of particle effects that were in the area. But it didn't yeah. look too busy to the point where I was like lost in the sauce. Like I could definitely see what's going on. And to your point before where you were talking about how everything's a work in progress, I think it's good that it's a work in progress and we're making comments on it because... Um, our feedback actually gets to go into the development process and they do get to fix those things that we are either deflated about or really excited about and they won't change the things that we're really excited about, right? Or they'll, yeah. or they'll improve upon the things that we already think are good. So I think exactly. it's very good to give 
both good and uh, and bad feedback for the the devs so that they can uh, work on those things. And uh, it, with the actual outside of the orb going away, and it seemed like it was like mostly just like the center ball, and it was kind of uh, electrocuting out. I thought that was really cool. Um, as far as visual clarity, sometimes as a PvP or you like to have that hitbox kind of visual clarity yeah so like it going totally totally away might be a bad thing uh in terms of that but like yeah at the same time it might just be like skill issue you know mm -hmm. um before vertex goes the link i shared in uh in chat is actually from Ajani, who shows the old the new and then their edit which is kind of like a mix but vertex go ahead what was your thought um here real quick uh let me do this here too because I just thought that might be helpful for anybody who's looking at this. Maybe you didn't see the old one. You would like to see them compared next to each other. Um, it really does remind me of that like meme where it's like they took two things and they're like mix. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I I actually like the newer version. Um, the only thing the only thing I could see them adding back in was a little bit of the the blue light that kind of reflected around on the ground underneath it. And who knows, yeah. they might already be planning to do that, to be honest. Yeah. But um, so my my view on it is just the feeling of the ball. Like if, if there's a solid sphere around it, it feels like you're trying to contain the lightning. Mm -hmm. And it feels like it should bounce off of things and it should be just literally a ball that has Instead lightning just in it. just going through. And maybe it'll shock it if, you, if it touches you, but it's probably going to roll over you and like squish you into the ground. <laughs> uh, whereas if it's a there's a central core point that's shooting lightning out it feels like mm -hmm. you are summoning lightning from that point and that's traveling around and it's shooting lightning out from there yeah it just I to agree. me that feels um, better and still having the the halo around it because it's got a little bit of a glowing halo it's not as defined as it used to be but it's still a halo yeah. that'll show you the the rough hitbox um when it passes by and i i personally I think that's that's sufficient enough and it, i think it looks better the way it is but i personal actually kind of like their edit a um on this post i think that edit a could be a mix between their edit a and the new one where the outline is still even a lot lighter more transparent um but i do agree with you like if it looks more like a ball i expect it to act like a ball and a ball bounces off of stuff or pops and um that's kind of like R R raka saying um i want it to explode on impact so like you know think of a bubble right a bubble once it touches something it pops um versus like a more structured um like ball you know um <laughs> but grim says the most effects i think they should add some level of alpha to it like 20 percent to me even the clear stuff looked like uh looked to me like a moving sticker I could see that. Um, and then then Derek's kind of on the same vein of like our thoughts on the um, skills is asking, what are your thoughts about the uh, fireball showcase? Well, real quick, before we dive into that, the one thing oh, I yeah. wanted to add on, something that'd be kind of cool with the lightning ball effect would be yeah. how neat would it be if uh, like down the line, either a secondary augment gives you the ability to do so, like if you go mage mage or something. Or mm -hmm. even if they, they build out the skill tree and once you get to like level 50 or whatever, you can unlock the ability to explode the lightning ball for a, twice the area of effect, but it stops moving. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, we, we really don't know like what how we can augment our spells and stuff. So uh, uh, we could very well see stuff like that come out in the future with that one ability where maybe you want it to move really slow but like do a lot of damage or move really fast and just kind of do like a capped amount of damage like we don't know like exactly what the spell entails so yeah mm -hmm. i think that's all subject to uh time i guess yeah. <laughs> uh as far as the fireball stuff it definitely seemed i liked the particle effects uh the actual magma spell seemed like it was a little bugged still so i think they yeah. like he like tried to target the the minotaur a few times and it just showed up right in front of him and it's like oh okay that's not where it was supposed to go <laughs> but um <laughs> i i think a lot of that's a template thing though like maybe he 
like maybe it's a template and you have to actually like move your mouse but maybe your mouse was like right in front of you instead of on your like you know what i mean yeah yeah i know what you mean um yeah i, I don't know exactly how that spell was supposed to interact i, I watched yeah. it like three times and i was like is it just a target is it like where his mouse is like i couldn't tell yeah like if he had like quick cast on or something like i had, yeah. I had no idea yeah <laughs> exactly I was just going to say it was like a quick cast thing where normally you'd like hold the button down, aim your template and then lose it, but just smash the key Ooh. and it just dropped wherever the mouse that was. That would be kind of cool. I didn't think about that because I I only thought of either it being like the person you're targeting and when you hit it, it's there or it being a template that you click down. I never thought about like holding a button down and then being able to aim it and then releasing it. That, I, I kind of like that idea, actually. Yeah, sometimes it's like on press, too. So like yeah. you just get like aim at the area that you're going for and then you just press the button and it just automatically spawns. The reason why you do that is because, you know, it's just a faster animation. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah. That was a cool idea, Vertek. I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I, well, actually, Vertek, did you answer? I don't think you did. You're just commenting. Um, I mean, I like that. Pretty much had the same kind of same kind of views. I did like how the uh, the little fireball thing when it would hit somebody. It looked like the the effect they were going for, and I think they they did pretty cool with it. Was uh, making it look like it was just flames kind of dancing off wherever it hit. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. I yeah, think the, it the visual really effects cool. team does great, 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 great work. Ooh, mm -hmm. okay. Um, they apparently showed some close ups of the fireball on Instagram. The explosion itself. Uh, Cindrix feels uh, a little thin. Hmm. How Maybe, do you look? Right? Yeah. Mage Bard would do that instead, being more adept at buffs and debuffs. Hmm. Because Grim Liberty was saying Mage Mage Lightning Ball reduces electricity resistance. I could see Mage, uh, Mage Bard doing it. Could see that, could see that. Uh, as we are all uh, yeah, Instagram just... searching. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what I'm I want to do phone. is go pull it up and see if I could actually uh, pull it up on stream while we're, while we're talking about it. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's the one in the middle. Um, second row down. I kind of like it. It's a little fast for me, uh, the explosion thing. It feels like I like the actual fireball thing. But the the explosion thing, I don't know, it's just a little weird to me. Unless it's it, like a super leveled up one. It looks great. I, it definitely looks like it's just a work in progress for sure. Like I don't yeah. think this is going to be anywhere close. Um, Personally for me, I could do without the rings that are expanding out afterwards. I think the base animation without the rings are just fine. I do like the animation after where he's burning. It, like, yeah. it is really good yeah. visual clarity. Really, really good visual clarity there. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then I can share the link. I don't know who else has um, who else has Instagram, but this is the link to that exact Instagram post. Hi, Hidden Dagger. <laughs> Welcome in. Um, and then I will also put this in the notes to go in the YouTube. So for those of you watching this on YouTube later, it's in the description. Oh my gosh, it's nice. I'm what? just here to start the make. No, nice. <laughs> Get out. You're fired. Best challenge ever. Best challenge no. ever. No. <laughs> Purple mics. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to match with him. I didn't get the memo, apparently. No, no, uh, it's okay. with the program. You, you, you match with Vertex, though. Because you guys both have black base mics. I have the white one because I'm turning in early. <laughs> I'm halfway there. You're halfway there. It works. Yeah, the actual question on if it uh, on it was if it should be a longer cast or not. Um, I mean, it does feel like it's a sped up to me, but I go. also just I'm not a fan of the rings, but I'm also not going to be playing mage. So oh, it's on the screen right now. Do not. Yeah. Yeah. He he went through and grabbed Perfect. it. Uh, by it. all means, do not take my word for it. Do not take my opinion of it because I am not going to be playing mage. Um, but yeah, that after effect there, like the circles that go out, just not a fan of that myself. Uh, yeah, it might be a little bit too extra. 
uh, if they keep it like closer to this character, like the target's core, it might be yeah. a lot better. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the actual effects where it like spreads out and like all the little flakes come out. That's yeah. the work in progress part that I was talking about. Uh, like it just doesn't look like it's and in its final state. But for yeah. the speed, um, it kind of looks like a scorching ray more than a fireball to me. So mm. like if it's a fireball, it should just be like a long, long cast time, big explosion. But that looks like a scorching ray type of thing. So yeah, fire like fireball to me. Fireball. Yeah, yeah. Fire yeah fireball to me feels feels very much like what they had in the uh, APOC um, testing with meteor, mm -hmm. where it was a it was a long cast time. It took a it took a moment. And you could see it coming down. If you didn't move out of the way, you were getting wrecked. But you know, yeah. covered a wide area, long cast time, big impact, and big uh, big damage. But there's plenty of time for whatever it is to move out of the way. I should say who yeah. it's an NPC. It might not recognize that there's a meteor falling on its skull. Can't yeah. stand out of the red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Derek says when I hear fireball, I think D and D fireball. Big boom, boom big damage. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like a, a a fireball falling out of the sky, maybe. I don't know, but I do see this being like a fire bolt, fire bullet, as Grim Liberty said. But right there with the um the screen grab for it, that is like the um. The thumbnail i like that because they don't have the big circles yet but i like the little tiny flakes that are bursting off of them mm -hmm. and then the fire like you said being on fire afterwards i like those so. yeah i think um i think with the graphics part i think it would probably settle i think it would probably settle down a little bit and be a little bit more uh, visually nice to me anyway if they just took the the big splash that they that they do upon the the hit and just took the entire graphic and just shrunk it down. Yep, mm -hmm. I agree. Because I would, it'd be a little bit more focused on the person. It would feel more like a quick cast effect, uh, or resulting uh, visual effect. And also, it would address uh, Sindarix's Cinder <clears throat> point that it feels kind of like the flames are really thin when it splashes out like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Welcome in, Sir Ozington. Sir but, um, says fire magic so taboo. So taboo. <laughs> But yeah, I think they just they just took that big that big label or the big uh, decal for the the splash damage and just squished it down. It would make it feel more dense at the same yeah. time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna move us over to uh, talking about biome for a second. Um, this is from Toothpaste. <laughs> uh, and the title of this thread is uh, "The Desert Biome Is Real." Dot dot dot. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and they highlight some things where um, they're kind of concerned about. Um, and this one is like the lack of a mini map, although you can see that it is uh, in a closer up screenshot. It is like pulled up. Um, it's collapsed. Um, and. Um, they highlight that it says lion hold on the title area of like the location um and just like a variety of other things and i think that uh i agree with what nick says while i nick says while i do agree that this location was very far from being finished as evident by lighting water and, and repeated mobs um i could maybe give benefit of the doubt for that empty spot if this location is supposed to be on the eastern side of the desert, Stephen is looking uh, to the southwest um, at that 410, 1410 mark. And um, as this map shows, there's a barren desert in the middle of this region. Um, and this is going back to the Sand Squall uh, Desert. Um, oh, well, that paint showed where <laughs> the mini map was murdered. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Wizzy. Wizzy. Thank you. There's one right scorpion. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's a long time. Wizzy just wants scorpion mounts. <laughs> Dude, the scorpion <laughs> bot raid boss looks so cool. Dude, uh, seriously. Um, but is going on to the, the Sands Call Desert and if it's real and with all these topics. Yeah. Obviously, I think it's real. I don't think that they have all the assets ready for it. Steven was alluding to that previously yep. that it, they just straight up don't have the content in all the biomes, but like uh, the assets are being created. They just haven't populated mm -hmm. the maps. 
and they had it on like what seven biomes are almost done with the assets so they just haven't populated the areas they yeah. haven't uh done the full visual effects uh or not visual effects but the full um lighting for the areas and everything like that yet they haven't really optimized all of those areas for sure yeah uh like steven is alluding to that we are definitely very very far nice. away from launch thank you, thank Anon, you anonymous for gifter nice, uh, good. much appreciated cheers to uh, you cheers indeed cheers to thank both you Anon. oh forgot mine oh my gosh behind it was a program know. Yeah, I a nine. Thank my you. first time drinking at the bar. Yeah, a, a tear sub. Thank you. Thank you again and cheers again. Yes, cheers again. Cheers, cheers, cheers. <laughs> we need to get our own tinkards. I told <laughs> Cash and Jibs oh, I'm yeah. jealous. Oh yeah, they have amazing tinkards. Mm hmm But um yeah, I'm I'm kind of in agreement. Like you gotta think about it logically. This is a, a development studio that's been working on an entire world, right? There's only yeah. going to be a portion of it available in Alpha 2. But they're working on developing an entire world. Why would they not just pick a random place with specific types of baddies or just a random place altogether? Mm -hmm. And if it's not a place that's going to be in Alpha 2, just remove the minimap. Like, that would mm -hmm. be my logic for it is, hey, let's find a neat spot like that looks really cool and will really show off the nighttime sky, right? Mm -hmm. And, oh, wait, Thank it's actually in the... Thank if this is the same anonymous Dirks. gifter, we'll thank you again for a third time. Okay. You're too kind. You're too kind. Much appreciated. Here's to that. Here's but, to that um, indeed. Yeah, I think they just chose a good spot that would look neat at nighttime with a good variety of, of landscape and then the water sitting around and, and such like that. Maybe maybe some enemies that have some cool skills to show off that aren't brand new for everyone seeing. Mm -hmm. It also isn't the same old stuff that we've been seeing for the longest time. So that's my theory right. on it. The other thing, my theory is not only has the community constantly been like, ah, it's the Riverlands again. <laughs> yeah. But also, um, you know, I'm I'm sure that they don't want to show off too much. And I kind of like what Theron Play says in the in the chat here, in the um not our chat, but in the comments. Excuse me. Um, Saron says, yes, the desert biome is under development, and to be realistic, it should be about 30% to be optimistic. The game itself is at 40%, and that is too optimistic, um, since this project is um, also ambitious, and they're creating a hybrid uh, combat system, no system, evil system, etc. So the fact that you're seeing only a little bit of the Sand Squall Desert, and it's not fully fleshed out, like, yeah, they're they're still wor working on stuff, um, and I mean, I honestly, I I will happily take this if over like giving us too much information because again, Stephen kept saying like he wants us as players to experience the game in game. So if they show off too much before we get into Alpha Two, then there's not much as much like excitement of exploring and seeing stuff for the first time, but. Um, I mean, if it's anything like Alpha 1, I remember coming across an area that I saw Steve and Maggie and the Intrepid folks in being like, oh my gosh, I saw this on the stream. I know where this is now. This is so cool. You know, yep. like, I think I like that better. Don't show me the whole area. I don't mind showing, seeing a little bit of it, but also, I mean, who knows? Maybe they increase the spawn rate. You know, Stephen did once summon 5,000 bears. Um, <laughs> maybe they one. Increase <laughs> all yeah, the bears. <laughs> Maybe they increase the spawn rate just to have him constantly have something to attack to showcase the fighting, you know? Mm -hmm. After all, it was a wand update, so... Yeah, I don't know. That's my, that's my little soapbox. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, there's definitely things that we're missing. Like, the audio, when he walked over the water, there was none. Mm -hmm. And, like, you would get that when you were, like, in the Riverlands. So, like, it's very obvious they just haven't touched this part of the map but it probably looked really cool with the skybox and the moons and the uh the nebula that like shows across the the constellations and whatnot so yeah yeah all in all um let i want to get your guys's take all in all i think it was a great stream i know that it was 
a, some will call it a filler episode or a filler live mm -hmm. stream but it did show a lot of progress and showed that they actually are listening to the player base and so i think that's a very big thing to show as we get into alpha 2. yeah, yeah i but, definitely agree yeah i but, agree like it's it's easy to call stuff that's environmental um fillers filler episodes or filler content because that's kind of how it feels when they're they're having like banger after banger monthly mm -hmm. show that's like big big reveal here big reveal there like big topic here big topic there but yeah i mean one of one of the more like memorable times that i had during the alpha one was just hearing the ocean really far away before i could even see that there was the ocean i just i heard the ocean i knew it was the ocean and just ran through with my headphones on and just listening to it as i was running over mountains and whatnot and finally just opened up to the ocean it was cool because it was it felt very immersive it felt like just it was pulling me in and it was yeah. drawing me to the ocean because of the sounds and, and that's, and that's all environmental filler content, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And I'm giggling because Bertek literally lost mm -hmm. his mind when he heard that and called me over. And I still love telling that story to this day. That shows you how important some of this filler content is. Like, he was like, Chibi, 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 come here, come here. You had to listen to this. <laughs> he puts his <laughs> headphones on. He's like, don't look, don't look. I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm like over here and he's like, going over this hill on his computer i don't see it and then i suddenly start hearing the ocean and he's like i don't even see it yet i need to see the ocean <laughs> it was so cute i loved it um yeah, but sound design is important you know almost mm -hmm. unreasonably excited about that it yeah when he when he gets giddy about something i can tell that it's like really big for him ah mm -hmm. yay we finished level one hype train thank you guys so much Ooh, ha, mm -hmm. thank you for that folks Here's to that wait huzzah to that huzzah, huzzah. but yeah um i'm gonna need a refill after all these chill cheers i know right i know I, you're gonna need it anyway we're gonna play a dead by daylight after this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. first time um, but yeah i think uh that kind of thumbs up that area i'm gonna go ahead and move us down into a uh, game system discussion area okay, okay. i'm gonna talk about time spent traveling i'm um... Because uh, in the Discord today, I was actually talking with Lloyd before stream. Uh, I, I put it in the Discord. I was like, non-shower thought. What if mages could port? But like only the nodes that they've been to. <laughs> and then Lloyd was like, okay, what if what if only the mage could port themselves, but a summoner could summon a friend? I was like, ooh, ooh, I like that. Um, because to be honest like there's a lot of time spent uh traveling in this game ah grim thank you for gifting you, two for forsaken gifting brother and yeah. cheers 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 you folks are being great and super nice today mm -hmm. very much appreciated one more and wait hold on i think my ui is wrong because the um chat is saying we're at 75 it is wrong all right so we owe you a spin we'll do that later though uh every five subs we do a spin so nice <laughs> um I, I like having very limited fast travel like warlock and all yeah exactly forsaken brothers kind of what i was thinking but like more limited um then i can drink for free <laughs> <laughs> how, fun, but, um, how funny would it be if uh along the same vein of if mages could uh teleport and summoners could summon people what if a mage could only port other people and only one person at a time and they'd have a, a cooldown, like a five, ten minute cooldown before they could port somebody else. Yeah, I think the cooldown portion is really important simply because of player behavior. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. get, Especially when you get to like 250 versus travel. 250. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I have yeah. a bunch of mages. We're just going to summon all of our homies. Like, <laughs> it could get out of control really fast. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. That'd be funny. Because um, then I was talking to Bertrand, I was like, um, I think he said, what if you port the summoner and then have the summoner summon you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I don't think it's something they would end up actually doing, though, because a giant guild would just have everybody create and mage alt and sit in town so they could be ported wherever they need to be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Yeah. I definitely um, think there's meaningful intention with long travel times and uh, trying not to uh, 
give players ways to break that system entirely, just like totally under undermine it. So, yeah, no. and we already have the family summons. I think someone mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll be honest. Like, whenever I play a game that does have Aloha. Hello. 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 Welcome in, Welcome everybody. In. Thank you for That's the raid. I don't think we've ever been raided by an Aloha. I think I think we have. Uh, yeah, I think we have a time or two. A long a time, time ago. Yeah, we haven't seen like... an Aloha in far too long. We need to get you on here again. Yeah. Aloha has been playing World of Warcraft a lot more lately, actually. So for those of you <laughs> that don't know, uh, just real quick aside, sorry. Um, Aloha is one of the girls that I met uh, when I first got into Ashes of Creation because we were both on DCN's uh, podcast. And that was the first podcast I'd ever been on. And it it was really funny because it turns out Vertech knew Aloha from another game. And mm -hmm. I met Aloha at DCN, so that's how I knew Vertech or er, Aloha. And um, after the podcast that I did with DCN, I really wanted to do more podcasts because I had so much fun. And then after I got to know Vertech and Vertech and I became partners, uh, we were like, let's make a podcast together. Let's do it. So mm -hmm. that's how the Golden Feather actually ended up being a thing is because I ended up on a, a, a podcast with Aloha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aloha is awesome. one of my favoriteest old, older, uh, I guess, long term acquaintances when it comes to like content creation and just the whole Twitch scene in general. Yeah, because uh, I didn't I didn't really jump into Twitch until around the time that uh, I met Aloha. So yeah. I think it's around the time I made my account, really, to be honest. But she's great. Yeah. Um, works on uh, Embers Adrift. One of the yes. community of people's over there. So definitely yes. check her out if you like that, which we realized the other day, Aloha, we're sorry. We're very we're sorry. sorry. <laughs> we, we recorded footage in order to put a video out about that that anniversary. You, event and everything and we never did the video we need to Cheers. we need to get that done and and let you do with it what you will mm -hmm. um, but we need to get that to you but um for those of you that are new here that have raided over with aloha hi welcome in i'm chibi uh this is vertex we do a podcast on uh fridays where we interview a bard and this week's bard is lloyd uh who you can see over in our portal <laughs> floating head here the floating head here and uh on tuesdays we vertech and i do a tavern talk where we open up the tavern to friends of the tavern to come and chit chat with us um but yeah we like talking about ashes of creation we sometimes play other games like tonight after the podcast we're going to be playing dead by daylight <laughs> don't mind me just bartending in the background <laughs> You're bartending in the background i like it i like it <laughs> I like it. What are you what are you making for us, bartender? Uh, you know what? I was through the portal. I wish I could. Uh, <laughs> I am not a mage, unfortunately. So Portal's I not can't that portal it to yet. you. Yeah. Um no, I was thinking about making a little Nakuin slurp, uh, which is like kind of like a a play on the Tolnar slurp, which is yeah. just basically pineapple juice, blue curacao, and a, a little mm. bit of dark rum. I like that. I like uh, that. But I took a nap and I wasn't able to go to the store, so I just got some uh, blue Gatorade and and Red Bull. Hey, mm. all right. Well, that works. <laughs> that works. Uh, refresh yeah, and yeah. energize, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. So, like, we're not tangents of creation or anything, but Sir Owen Zigton, you just gave me an idea for the spin. Uh oh. Fireball shot. Oh, cast a fireball into my mouth. Oh, that's so good. I cast fireball. I'm going to do that. I cast gotta... fireball. Fireball. Like, one of us, like, we, we both shout fireball as we take a fireball shot. I'm doing, I'm putting that on the list. That's going oh on gosh. the spinner. Oh my gosh. And I'll have to <laughs> terrible, try not terrible. to go. Every single time. Oi, 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 But uh wait, what were we talking about before uh, Aloha and her amazing traveling. <laughs> traveling, traveling. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. And and Ashes of Creation, because there's no um for those of you that don't know much about uh Ashes of Creation, there's no fast travel. There's no port uh no like unless you have two scientific. Also, Anon, thank you for giving it to Viral. By the way, Viral's gonna be on next weekend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Um, that's uh, 
by the way, the weekend where we had to, to move it to Saturday. It moved yes, Saturday. next Saturday. Because mm -hmm. even though we just moved uh, the podcast to Fridays, we had some longstanding plans that are going to need to take place on that Friday. So, yeah. But the cool thing about next Saturday is we get to read over to Jamie and Annie for their tangents of uh, yeah. creation. Yeah, podcast, it's been a while so. since we could read them. Everybody's yeah, exactly. been shuffling their nights and everything. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, but travel. They, they just got done moving too. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, as you were trying to jump back into the topic. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 they just got done physically moving. There's all the, uh, the digital moving, but then physical. <laughs> Anonymous, holy mackerel. I'm I going to I assume this is all the same so person. Give, yeah, I wish I knew who you were so I could give you like some sort of thank you. Besides all these cheers. Well, thank you know you. who you are. We may not, but you know who you are. So thank you. Much appreciated. Cheers. Just know that tonight you were the tavern favorite. <laughs> you know, that guy that buys everybody a, a shot. Or oh, yeah, he's yeah, just sitting yeah. in the corner, just chilling. <laughs> Rounds on anonymous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so traveling but, yeah. and fast traveling in game. So mm -hmm. because I only one... really. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to finish the scale. Uh, I think Riverlands is the size of New World for those of you that follow New World. Like the <laughs> biome <laughs> of Riverlands is the size of New World ish. Yeah, it's going to be massive. But, you know, yeah. I, I found myself only missing fast travel and uh, flying and whatnot, like ways of getting around super fast in games that actually have it already. Yeah, if it doesn't exist in the game. I might I might, you know, complain about it a little bit. But as long as they don't have it set up like and I'm going to throw some some shade here. Uh, Final Fantasy 11, <laughs> where um you get a quest that sends you quite literally, and I exaggerate sometimes, but it's quite literally, a, a, it was a 10 to 15 minute run across the map to get to a quest. And yeah. then I finish the quest and I run the other 10 to 15 minutes back. And then I turn in the quest in and then someone else sends me back to the same stupid cave. It's another 10 to 15 minute run. So I finished two quests in an hour. And most of the time was spent traveling because I only took five minutes to complete whatever quest goal it was after I finally got there. Yeah. And that bothered the bejeebus out of me. But as long as it's not set up in that kind of way, then I'm I'm fine with having to walk around. I get to experience the map more. I get more of a feel of the environment. You start flying yeah. around and you just... How far is it to and, the next town? I don't know. I don't care. I'm just going there. And Derek's kind of, if you don't mind pulling that up on screen, kind of has a similar thought. Um, saying that I like the longer travel times running across the world to join your friends can be intense and dangerous back in EQ days before planes of power just getting where you were going was the adventure itself mm, 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 mm. Uh, Anand thank you again cheers oh my gosh thank you, you. Cheers. you're amazing I'm, thank I'm you. literally out of my can of cider I'm going to mm. be cheersing with water here in a moment okay Ooh. Um, to kind of play devil's ad advocate Yes, Pretty I love the devil's point. advocate. Yeah, yeah. Be the devil. <laughs> I'm like, I, I will take any side of the argument whatsoever, but I definitely think uh, as part as devil's advocate is concerned that when I log into a game, sometimes it's really annoying that I have to spend 30 minutes to get to the place that I want to be, mm -hmm. and it can be really inconvenient. On the other side of that, <clears throat> I definitely agree with you guys where... Um, just being able to like the game systems are so complex and intricate that there almost needs to be no fast travel simply because there's so many different ways that you can wow oh my gosh you guys oh my thank goodness. you and it landed oh, on jamie you. too and it landed on jamie <laughs> everybody is uh has been nice in the ashes community lately even uh Lordforged last night they got like 38 subs or something like that oh my gosh Hello, uh, that's in. She. oh, oh my, my gosh goodness. cheers thank you. actually big cheers to you guys i'm gonna I, I might even just do an automatic fireball to start off dbd <laughs> yeah Perfect. yeah we're just gonna yeah we're just gonna have an auto fireball um, we are two away from the next spin. I've got two spins here, though, so I'm keeping track. I've got I got my whiteboard over here. <laughs> yeah. um, Community has been super awesome. They have lately, been. yeah. I I Absolutely. feel like the excitement is coming back in the community. I don't know about you. Um, I'm kind of riding the wave, actually. Like before this, I 
like the last two or three weeks, I have just been experiencing monumental growth where before I was like getting nothing. So like, yeah, the, the last three weeks have been really eye opening to me. Like the fact that I hit 500 subs on YouTube is crazy to me because yeah. I was like, I, I had no idea that like I, I just put out a couple of videos and all of a sudden it started gaining traction. So like it, it just goes to show you if you just keep at it, like eventually mm -hmm. you'll just randomly hit like a bunch of yeah. momentum out of nowhere. So exactly. it's been really fun and op uh, and eye opening and the community has been great. So I can't really I can't wait for A2, honestly. Um, yeah, I, and when I can start making real content that people can actually see, you know, like that would be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But cheers yeah. to you guys for, you know, doing this for five years with no no playtime, really, except for Alpha One. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> honestly, it's had its downsides. I mean, those content drop, but I feel like we have the benefit of the community. Our our content is is you guys. You guys are our content. We want to know what you guys are thinking, what you guys are doing, and and how you feel about stuff. And like that really gives us a lot of stuff to to go off of. Um, so I've been very grateful for that. But I have you know seen like you know when there is content drought or hype is low, you know, I've I've definitely noticed that like some of the other CCs have struggled as they go. I'm just mm -hmm. we're just grateful that we have you you guys here whoever's chatting whoever is here you know we're, I'm sure we're all of us you. uh me speaking on behalf of everybody because i'm sure that i'm like 100 percent positive they share this but they're always happy to come onto the show and, and just be able to talk ashes with like-minded individuals so mm -hmm. uh yeah. thanks for being that outlet yeah, yeah of course of course we love we love um, it we love it i also wanted to say what uh Sir Ontington set up here. Sorry to get us back on track a little bit. Um, don't like the distances and ashes? Buy one of my handcrafted beasties to get there in a clap. Need a uh, new breed available, the hippogriff. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's mm -hmm. kind of alluding to like what I was saying is that the systems really do involve like it like needs you to have long distances uh, mm -hmm. so that you have meaningful content and meaningful systems within the games that aren't game breaking. They don't feel very gamey where you can just summon a bunch of people or like everyone can teleport to a certain node and go defend it or whatever. Like yeah. your placement on the map matters. And it almost seems to me like Vera is meant to be a kingdoms game, not like a player game. Yeah. So, uh, I am really, really interested in that aspect as I don't think any MMO has really thought about the macro of the world where it yeah. seems Steven and Trepid really have thought about the macro um, when it comes to a topic that we have coming up, which is sieges at level 50. Um, <clears throat> what I mean by that is like the PvP caravans seem very attacker side biased, but they should be as node sieges no like uh castle sieges all this stuff tends to be defensive favored so if you're cutting off their resources as like an attacker it, you are attacking their macro basically you are attacking their resources in order to have an advantage in what would normally be a disadvantageous position so i think mm -hmm. when you really zoom out you start to see what ashes really is and I, I don't right. think people zoom out quite often enough. So basically, yeah, the long travel times are definitely a part of that system. And as inconvenient as it may be to the player, I think it's necessary. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Um, and also, yeah. this drives, draws us back to uh, what Cash was saying. He started playing World of Warcraft again, and he's getting into role play with that. But he actually like turned on the walk, like toggle, mm -hmm. and walked around Stormwind. And he was like, I was just really enjoying it. I was walking around, I was talking to the different NPCs. Um, something about thanking one of the uh one of the knights of the guards uh for their service. <laughs> um, but like I feel like taking that and slowing it down, it makes you appreciate the um, environment a lot more. It makes you appreciate the vastness of the game. I mean, I honestly, I didn't think twice about popping onto a wyvern or something like that and hitting auto fly 
point it in the direction that I'm trying to go, walk away, go get some food, come back, sit here, eat some food, watch myself flying through the air slowly, you know? Um, but think of how much like more intense that would have been, you know, for it to be all on the ground, right? Um, and I, I think that Intrepid is trying to slow things down a little bit in that aspect of like, yeah, you're going to have to spend time. Uh, you're going to have to take a while to get to the that siege location. Yeah. And I guess from a player perspective as well, uh, to kind of add to their point, it's only an annoying or inconvenient if there isn't content on the way. Like if it's yeah. just a road and you're just walking and doing the the wetlands run or whatever and you're... The wetlands run was pretty fun because like you're trying to you know avoid getting killed and corpse walking your, your way across but like there's threat there but if there's no threat and you're just kind of walking long distances with no content then you know why why is that even a thing yeah and it's just bad design in my opinion viral says i love getting sidetracked but vertex loves getting sidetracked too vertex Same. has the ooh shiny curse yeah, I do. I have the I need to complete everything. And if I'm here and there's something to complete, I may as well do it now rather than come back later. Because what if it isn't available later, which actually Vertech and I were talking about our different play styles, um, just as a quick aside. And um, I am the type of person that I just zoom through, like I see the objective and I follow the objective. And um, there's been times where I've gotten myself locked out of being able to do stuff later because I followed the objective, not knowing that there were side objectives that I could come to or could not come back to later, i.e. BG3. Oh, where... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, you were going yeah. way too fast. I'm like, she's rushing me. She said we have to get there. I'm trying we to get, have to get there. there. <laughs> like, you don't realize the stuff you've done in the last 20 minutes, it took me like six hours to complete. <laughs> okay nothing has exploded yet yeah uh yeah. It, that's funny too because i i have like adhd so i just oh what's that like i'm very vertex esque where like oh shiny what's this what's that yeah. and when i was playing bg3 i think i i spent 80 hours on act one mm -hmm. alone yeah just because i was replaying it playing it from different like perspective like i was like what if i chose that option instead yeah, like stuff. like yeah i was checking out yeah. everything and that's where tv and i varied greatly and why she felt she had to be rushed because lazel was the one telling her she had to go 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 and i as soon as i got her in the party i stole her armor and stuck her in the camp and i never pulled her out again after that <laughs> except for like one you know that one specific area where that's kind of her area i pulled her out once to see if there was any big difference and i didn't care for the difference so i just left her in the camp <laughs> yeah and for me like i don't know like um i'm so used to the game giving you hints and cues so if she's being so insistent that tells me right off the bat subconsciously this is time gated you must complete this within a certain time or you're gonna lose the objective or whatever so i'm like okay let me go do this thing let me go do this thing um, because I have ADHD too, but there's certain cues where like if something seems to be pushed, it that's a subliminal way of being like, this is more important. You should do this first. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I just I put like pins and stuff like, oh, that looks cool. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, that seemed hard. I'm going to come back to that. And then I forget to come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I relate. But uh, yeah, so the I, I don't know. I feel like. Um, there's also things like um, that slow, that slow walking, and or not slow walking, but the slow travel and the the lack of like a um, a what do you call it, a uh, group finder, like a an mm -hmm. automatic teleport you to where you're supposed to be going, group finder. Um, I think that also brings a lot more importance, especially when you're trying to converge for things like the castles and stuff. Um, and Nick actually has a uh a post here about sieges at level 50 um and said that we've got new uh, info that mobs in the castles will be level 50 or like plus uh, which means that yet another big part of the game is only reserved for late game just as freeholds are instead of being accessible throughout the game what are your thoughts on that and i didn't get that impression i'm gonna be honest but i'm gonna elaborate more on that later but just what are what are your thoughts on that I think it goes, yeah, I I still hold the point that, like, people need to really 
zoom out about how they view ashes of creation that like i read that post and i felt that there was some sort of like fomo in like his perspective but there really shouldn't be like yeah. um when you're a approaching things like castle sieges and stuff like that and and you have to be level 50 for like end game content and stuff mm -hmm. i think that's fine because it's not a rush to who gets there first it's who yeah. has it last so yeah. you may take a year to hit level 50 and the 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 first guild to get it might be there at like three weeks in whatever but like once you hit that end game content you have just an equal amount of choice and chance to take that back. So I, I think when people bring up like how things are going to exist at launch, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be a very sustainable perspective. And I don't think Ashes or Intrepid should take that perspective. Uh, I, I definitely think that they should be thinking about five, ten years into the future, not not the first year of launch. Yeah. So I agree with you to a point, but I also have some some disagreements on that. Like, I think that content to be done and content to experience could absolutely be time and level gated. If it's just another dungeon, if it's just another raid and there are dungeons and raids all the way up through the levels or, or what have you, um, if it's just another biome and it's just another play, uh, uh, environment to experience, absolutely like level gate the bejeebus out of that like have people mm -hmm. have a progression but when it comes to core features of a game like freeholds like castles that are going to be warred over by guilds and such like that those i feel should have a little bit more openness to them or else it is going to create the the impetus of i must get up there because it's not so much who, uh, in my mind it's not so much who holds it last as far as who holds it the longest because there's going to be taxes taken out of all the activities people do all the sales all the purchases all of the you know the money that's earned stuff like that is going to be gathered up by castles and by uh uh nodes the and everything that's under their zoi it's going to be collecting money and doing things and accomplishing stuff yeah. and whoever has it the longest is going to come out ahead I actually love that you disagree with me because uh, it, it allows for these types of conversations. So, yeah, um, I love disagreements, to be honest, as long as they're not like <laughs> violent disagreements. I'm, I'm OK, yes. because it, I've been I've I've changed my mind quite a few times just listening to people talk. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it happens. And I guess as a rebuttal for that, um, the node system is a way but. First, you said who should hold it. It's who, 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 blah, 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 blah. words, words are hard right now. Thanks for all the mm -hmm. cheers, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Good job. Good um, job. Keep it up. Good job. Good job. Uh, it is who holds it the longest, which is um, why things like taxes and stuff like that is such a pivotal aspect of the node system, because if you are poorly mismanaging your your tax system and not being a good leader i don't think you'll hold on to that node for very long which means that the people that have freeholds to that node can also be uh subject to attacks on that and their freeholds will be at risk so uh they and maybe they just maybe they're part of the attack maybe they get up and leave and attack that node so that they can change that mayor so that they can you know um Put their freehold down with a better leader or something like that there there are so many different ways this can go where you are using these systems so that you can properly use your freehold the way that you want to or if you are late to the party and you haven't got a freehold maybe you you maybe you do some of social engineering and try to take down that node so that you can get a, a freehold later or you join a power node just to attack someone else so that you can join that rebuilding node yeah yeah and you know what i also have another opinion that just developed while you were talking and that's uh those who owned freeholds should probably have a stronger voting power in the government yeah maybe because they I have agree. to, they have to, they have some some property and more skin in the game. Uh, as I just read in Grim Liberty's uh, statement there, so it's stuck in my head. 
Um, but uh, also the just the amount of uh, time, effort, money, and luck that it's going to take to to hold a freehold. I think that dedication mm -hmm. to choose a a node and legitimately put a ton of money into something like that, it should give a little bit more uh, voting power on uh, whatever decisions can be can be made. Very futile, yes, but it's a it's a big risk to even buy a freehold, apparently. Mm -hmm. But it feels it's, like anyway, it's going to be. Oh my gosh, Lord Forge! Thank you, hello, Lord wow. Forge and friends. Thank you for the raid. Hello, hello. Cheers, indeed. The raid forge. Oh my gosh, HQ coming I get, over here. I get to actually see my little raid emote going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Welcome in. I hope you guys had a good chat. I saw you two chatting about ashes. <laughs> Very excited to have you. Hello, Wataru. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um, we are talking about level 50 uh, castle sieging. And um, I actually had my opinion. Wait, hold on. First, 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 first. Sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to get used to this new formatting. If you guys <laughs> haven't heard of Loreforged yet, Loreforged actually makes some really, really good content. They have their own podcast as well. Um, they make uh, videos about making food and some lore behind that. I love Cash's food making videos. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Sunny and Jibs also have like their lore videos that they've been making. And uh, I've been especially enjoying Sunny going live while I'm working. And uh, I get to just like listen to him play video games while I'm like finishing up work. <laughs> so cool people. They've been around uh, for a little while. And thank you, Anon, for gifting us up to Lord Forge. We we oh, love boy. them. So uh, very, very quick and up and coming. Yes, the Baron Chef does make me hungry. I agree. Um, and Jibs, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. And Dumos, thank you for the follow as well. Um, yeah, speaking of, so I mean, since we had uh, Aloha swing in, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a friend from a long time ago, uh, Lord Forge folks are as well. From the same oh, yeah, era, from right. the same you, game. You <laughs> actually, for that matter. fun fact, we found this out and we got to talk about it when we had Sunny on. Vertek interviewed Sunny on a different podcast he had, or Swordsware, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, in 20, 2011 or 2012. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard Sunny, no way, no way that's Sunny from Sunny's Diner, but, you know, let me take it. It, it was. is. It was. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Anon. Oh my gosh. Okay, that takes us to 85. I'll put another Anon. spin on here. Oh thank my you gosh, we're all the spins. If all we the don't spins. claim him. Is, is that why I didn't see him on your, your show tonight? I, so I I have everybody who I know um, lurked in the background on a tab somewhere uh, while we're streaming, just so you guys know if you didn't Fun know fact, that before. we do that, yeah. Yeah, I, I opened every single one of them. That's part of my, my stream startup routine, actually. Um, but yeah, I didn't see a, didn't see a, didn't see a sunny on today. I just saw the two of you Thanks. hanging out. Was he, was he stuck in the closet? Was he ejected for the day? <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, Squatch. I thought I saw him playing Manor Lords earlier. Mm. I could mm. be wrong. We try not to Potential. have ads, um, but we do have some of them on just to get rid of pre-roll because we hate pre-roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple I'll of people were... Quick. He was stung by bees, needed a nap. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Sunny. Poor Sunny. Sad hoots. Sad hoots for the Sunny. But um, I know, I know, I know, Wizzy. Um, but yeah, I wanted to say uh, my thoughts on um, the the thing is, well, what if it, do you guys, you guys have both played, well, I know Vertex has, but Lloyd, you played World of Warcraft? Yeah, I, I played it not like at a really high level, but I've definitely played it. You remember like Ganon in the Orc Um As a rogue, you're supposed to pickpocket him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, making all the mobs level 50, I don't agree or disagree with either of you necessarily. It's just a whole other take. Um, making the mobs level 50 in the castle is kind of akin to when they beefed him up because people kept killing him. So it takes more effort to take down the castle to earn the castle in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because in my mind... You you have to somehow take over this castle, and then from there you have to take the castle from somebody else. And would you not want to send your strongest, most 
enabled people to be the guards of a castle. Mm -hmm. So to me, it makes sense. Yeah, I don't know about like, because they're just NPCs at first when, when the castles are unguarded. And I don't know if that's what they're worried about is that just because it's level gated by time and not everybody shares the same amount of time um, that the castle will be easier to take for the people that just get there faster, which yeah. is fair. But uh, at the same time, it's like those people probably just put in more time at the start um, and have that ability to. So, I mean, if you're really attempting to get something like a castle, um, at a really high competitive level, maybe you do need to do that at, you know, whatever level that is, is just putting in that amount of time by either taking off work or whatever that these people do to get there. That'll never be me. I won't be the one, the owner at the start of a castle, but uh, I'll definitely try to get there at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And just a quick side note, sorry, because people are saying there's a lot of ads in the chat. We are not in control of how many ads there are. That's all Twitch. We just say, can I have the bare minimum so that for the next 45 to 50 minutes, there's no pre-roll? <laughs> That's all we did. Um, so, Gosh. yeah. One out of 86 ads playing. 86. Yeah. Yeah, right. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's, <laughs> mean, it's like one of those like little uh, ad emotes where they're just like making it seem way hy hyperbolic yeah, yeah. Uh, but that being said vertek and i are working to also live stream over on youtube at the same time <laughs> so <laughs> that way there there's an avenue for you to still watch our live streams without ads because we hate them trust me we hate them we, we wish we could just turn them off altogether. <laughs> but oh. that being said when we did have them off and there was a pre-roll some people would get stuck where like if they had a refresh they would get stuck in another ad so yeah ads everywhere ads everywhere yep greedy greedy was it um, the uh ea ceo or something was talking about trying to shove ads into like single player games too i don't know how you can have bad take after bad take and still keep taking l's and still right. keep making these decisions right. that's crazy I still think it's a right. good idea yeah. Oh like, it's just nice. No, thank you. There's more ways to put ads in the game. It's going to be great, guys. It's going to be great. EA, the ads in the game. Yeah. <laughs> God, that was good. That was good. <laughs> EA, the ads, the game. <laughs> um. Oh, my gosh. But <laughs> um, I just wanted a pizza. <laughs> oh. Um, How do you? But yeah, so I think I think there's a variety of things that we can go, but I think all of this is also subject to t testing, you know, as we go through Alpha 2. Again, don't play Alpha 2. It will feel like playing. It's great if it feels like playing, but it's actually testing. Just a reminder, it is testing. Um, take a shot every time Steven says that too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think honestly, there's a lot of um, potential. There's a lot of things that can change. There's a lot of things that they need us in game to test in masses in order to see how well a system works. Mm -hmm. um, because I can imagine as uh, Intrepid is getting close to what, 200, 300 uh, people now, um, that's still nothing compared to the thousands of us waiting to get into Alpha 2. <laughs> so, um, Are we at what, like a, uh, over 100,000 as of two years ago, a year ago? I lost count, honestly, it keeps going up. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you can't get it anymore for like five months. So whatever that yeah. was ended up being so. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Unlike uh, some people who think that Ashes keeps asking for money, even though they're like telling people not to buy the, the alpha. <laughs> and the fact that you can't buy the alpha or any of the um, or any of the cosmetics. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fupo says 100K last year in February. So thank you. And, yeah. uh, you know, this year in January is when they closed off sale. So who knows how many of us there are. Mm -hmm. um, so at least a thousand and one now. At least a hundred thousand and one, yeah. I'd yeah. say that's a fair fair guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> Raka? <laughs> um, I didn't want to say any names, but... <laughs> oh, loudy, loudy. 
we knew. Um, there'll be at least two people playing. Exactly, exactly. Maybe. Uh, Vertek and I, I'll for sure. Two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just gonna have to wait for the next one, exactly. Um, so, I think maybe we should go ahead and close off the podcast portion and mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. get ready to do a hangout. Ooh, I think so too. Yeah. For those of you that, that are just joining, we're going to do a community night. Um, please feel free to uh, join us in our Discord. Um, but we are going to be playing Dead by Daylight and doing some spins. And I did not ignore you. I saw your question about what what is on the wheel. Um, we can totally show that when we get back. Uh, but I'm also I, I'm excited to add Fireball Shot to the wheel at this point. We're always looking for new ideas to add to this miraculous wheel thing. Yeah, um, just on, on the wheel, just put in all capital letters, I cast fireball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, I told someone earlier they're going to have at least 30 servers for you Yeah, which I think the server size will be oh, 200 max. I think they already said what the server size was going to be. Well, they said they're aiming for... 50,000 players, 10,000 concurrent, right? That's their goal. I think this is going to be... Alpha 2 is immediately going to be a stress test on that, so... Oh, yeah. Mm, oh, mm. my gosh. Speaking of Nice, who was in here earlier, I totally am over on Twitter right now. Apparently, there's a new 2v8 game mode coming to Dead by Daylight. Ooh. Hmm. Two killers, eight survivors. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds, that sounds like it would get kind of intense. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, rank five to add five ounces to the cast <laughs> sounds good to me yeah 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 exactly exactly um but also one other plug if you missed this and you want to see it or our older podcast all of it is up on our youtube channel um and uh, i need to update that uh copy because we are actually caught up <laughs> um Oot. But uh, if you want to join in the the uh, either general or the live queue, that'd be awesome. Um, but most importantly, Lloyd, congratulations on hitting uh, 500 subs thank you, on thank you. YouTube. Is there anything you would like to plug and or tell people about anything upcoming you have planned? Well, I'm going to be completely revamping my Discord. So that link that is in chat for my Discord, that's probably going to go away shortly and I'll be okay. creating a new community discord for that um uh -huh. as for everything else I think um I'm just going to keep on following the live development upstream and I know for a fact that on May 26th me and Anduin are going to be starting our Grey Sentinels podcast where we're going to be talking about our guild and I then um Yep, and then every first Sunday of every month, we will, uh, so like June 2nd would be the next podcast, where we will cover the the live updates together uh, and talk about like guild stuff, how we're going to approach the dynamics of that, and I think that's going to be our main goal for, for that, so I think we will be starting that up shortly, so May 26th and June 2nd would be those next two dates for that. And um, nice. we're just creating all the new the new channels and everything like that. So it's not up yet, but it will be at Gray Sentinels um, from I think I was able to at least get the names. So nice. nice. I'm very nice. excited nice. for that. And uh, if you missed it, he was also I'm going to plug this for him anyway. Uh, he was also on Vladis's 1v1 recently. So keep an eye out for that. Um, as for me, I just want to say, uh, if you like our kind of content and you want to support us, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can follow us on YouTube. You can interact with us here, follow us here on Twitch. Um, and, uh, if you would like to help support us monetarily to keep the tavern running and add more fun features, um, like apparently supporting the the never-ending fireball uh we're gonna be getting <laughs> <laughs> um feel free to subscribe here on twitch or in our discord we have discord subscriptions as well we do get 90 percent of the subs on discord but i believe we are i don't even know how far we are or how close we are to the 100 for twitch to get the next tier up which by we the way 20. if you guys don't know about that um we are close. There's a, a new plus program with Twitch where every time you level up with this plus program, you get a higher percentage. So the next percentage up is 60-40. Um, 
but yeah and that helps us bring more higher quality content to you and uh more content to you as well because our our dream is to do tgf tavern full-time with content and uh community stuff so yeah <laughs> And I just wanted to say thank you all for the support we had tonight. It was amazing, especially you, Anon, whoever you yeah. are. You yes. know who you are. Or multiple of you are. And thank you for all Inan the rates. giving you and VIP you rank right now. And thank you for everybody jumping in. And I just, I'm happy everybody's here. <laughs> yeah, the community's been great. I said that earlier, but yeah, I just love everything that the community's been doing, joining together, and I hope we uh, um, get to play together in Alpha 2. Protect, did you want to take us out? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yes, thank you everybody for popping in. Thank you for uh, chatting. Thank you for contributing to the conversation. That is the most important and the greatest way that you can support us. Uh, we love it. We love you. Uh, your conversation carries everything forward. Um, there is no us without you. Just saying. Um, but right now, just so you know, uh, I'm going to roll it out to an ending screen and then I'm going to put it back in countdown because we do need to shift some things up as far as how the how everything's all set up visually and get some stuff open and make sure everything's going to play nice before we launch right in. It should be about a should be about a 10 minute countdown again, just like the start of our stream. So get yourselves all situated. Grab yourself some drinks if you're going to be hanging out. Grab yourself some food if you're going to be hanging out. Um, Feel free to jump on in the game. We will be in Discord if you're looking to join in voice. Um, jump on into our Discord and go into the live stream queue. And uh, we'll we'll pull people in as we can and uh, get some custom games going. But um, either way, we'll see you folks here in a little bit. Again, we're going to an ending screen, but we're going right back into a countdown. So hang tight and we'll be back after the, the timer ticks all the way down. So grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and if you want to join us in Dead by Daylight, grab our Discord. ECCC. I just want to say thank you guys for having me on. Of course, thank you for, thank being, you here. for being on. I'm Had so excited to play Dead by Daylight with you. Yay! Peace. First time. We're, we're gonna. I'm gonna be bad at it, but we're gonna do it. You hey, know what? I'm good. sure a lot of us are gonna get drunk, and it'll be fun. Perfect. As long as you get scared <laughs> easily and shriek when I run around the corner with Pinhead at you, then all is well. Okay. You can definitely expect that. That's all you. All that's right. all he ever asks of anybody, honestly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see you all folks right. here in a little bit. See you soon. Bye.